Alright, so let's check some even more amazing items in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Tons of them to find, but unfortunately, quite a lot of them are also completely missable. To the point that, once you're past certain story moments, you can't really get them until you finish the game. So today we're gonna go over some of the best options when it comes to gear to give you amazing bonuses, tons of material slots, defenses, and we even have some returning items from Remake for the good old times. But before we go in, quick spoilers alert, we are going to talk about some mid to late game stuff, so proceed at your own risk. But starting with the first one, veterans of Remake will remember the days we got tormented by Jules. And yes, he is absolutely back and he's going to give us yet again another champion's belt. With the same stats as before, 10% HP and 5% bonus to strength. So to get this, you're gonna have to reach chapter 7 when you hit Costa del Sol. Eventually, once you complete the story in the area, a bunch of side quests will open up, including the bodybuilders in a bind. So in this one, you're going to eventually have to clear the area around and access Jules Training Gym right here to the west. And this is going to open up those crunches mini games. But this time around, I found them to be slightly easier. So if you didn't play these before, they are quite challenging at first, but trust me, you're gonna get it in like 5, 10, 20 tries. It's going to take a while, but once you get the groove of it and complete those crunches, you're going to know how to do it. There are two big tips that I have for you here compared to what we had in the remake. First, the green glow is really annoying, so when you see that happening, which is pretty much every fifth crunch, you will want to only hold down the button, either R2 or L2, only halfway down until you see the gauge filling up. And then once it does, immediately press it all the way down, and this is then going to let you go to the next section and just complete the next cycle. Against jewels, this will alternate between the green glow and the yellow glow, so the yellow one is much easier as you only have to tap that button repeatedly, and then this is going to let you progress through the next cycle. But as I've said, every fifth crunch slash setup, you're going to get either of these two. And in the case of Jules, you're going to have to beat his 49 crunches record. As long as you hit 50, you're going to be good and you're going to win the champion's belt. Again, this was one of the best for melee haters back in the game. And this is going to be one of the best in Rebirth as well. Now, also in Chapter 7, we have the Circlet, which is an amazing option for magic users. So this provides extra MP and also magic power by 5%. And this you can find pretty much outside of Costa del Sol, right here at the Sea Breeze Storehouse Cash location. So you're going to find it in one of the chests in the area. I believe that it was the one right behind the building, but it's pretty much one of these two. So this is what I mainly used for Aerith, as she's also my main spellcaster right there in the back. She can deal some extra damage, plus the extra MP lets her cast a lot more often. At number 3, we have the Healing Carcanet. So if you want to spec her as a healing character instead, you can basically get this item, which is going to increase the effectiveness of healing items, spells, and abilities during combat. So for this, you just need to head over a bit further west in a place called Cape de la Moor. There's going to be a bunch of uh, treasure chests over here. So simply head over to the end of these docks. You will also find another chest over there. But from this point on, simply jump in the water. And you will see an opening beneath. So this is the one that you're going to want to use to head over back to the beach level. And this is going to give you that chest with the healing carcanet inside. But at number 4 we have a very interesting item, however this comes a bit later into chapter 7, so this is going to be after you start your path up the mountain. So this will provide complete immunity, instant death, stone and even petrify effect. So this is amazing against thorn berries, pretty much anything that instantly one shots you but also petrifies you as we do have a lot of enemies after chapter 7 that tend to petrify you a lot and then one shot you so this can help a ton with that but uh, this is something that you have to do you have to progress in chapter 7 go through the mountains and up until you reach this mining railway location with a couple of tracks that diverge so simply head over to the junction with the lever over here that lets you switch between the tracks but whichever of these tracks you follow, they will both give you access to a middle platform between them with a shack and some enemies. So if you pick the one from above, this is going to let you just zip down very quickly. Simply defeat the enemies, go inside the shack and you're going to find the safety bit inside. Now from this point on, we have a ton of very big items coming up between chapter 9 and chapter 12 and specifically quite a lot of them 
from the gold saucer mini games which is why i heavily encourage you to go ahead and play them so let's talk about some of them that can be quite useful from early on and one that you can get from chapter 9 is actually the spectral cog wheel so for this you just have to beat the six person bouts access denied at the muscle head coliseum right here in the battle square so this is going to actually let you fill the limit gauge after consuming MP and it can be a very solid option again for spellcasters. It's not just spellcasters, pretty much everybody can use it both offensively and defensively. So for example, Aerith who casts a lot of spells can quickly fill up that limit gauge and for example use it for planet protection to heal everybody at the same time. It can definitely be a good one but you can pretty much place it on anybody and it will be just as good as long as the build that you use also uses spells so consume a lot of mp now the next one is going to come in a little bit later at chapter 11 this is one of the strongest items in the game and it's called the valkyrian bangle so this gives you actually six linked materia slots this is also going to provide some of the highest in terms of defense plus some pretty good magic defense as well so 60 and 30 respectively it's pretty much going to be higher than anything you're going to be able to craft but to get this in the first place you will need the nibble chocobo as that holds the water jet ability which is going to let you reach that specific area that holds the valkyrian bangle so to get that chocobo simply go ahead to this specific location right here it's actually very close to the starting zone so simply capture it and then you can use its water jet ability and once you do that head over right here southwest on this very island and you will have to circle around that entire grotto by basically using the water jet ability and going through the backside. so inside you're going to find a bunch of chests and one of them is going to give you the bangle but let's keep on going to the Hades armlet. This is another one of my favorites. It possibly has one of the highest number of materia slots. Pretty much seven with six of them being linked. And it comes with a very good 32 on both defense and magic defense. So again you get this from chapter 11 but this time around from the story. So there's going to be this moment during the Mako research facility section phase where you get to play as Kate Sith and kind of infiltrate through some of these air ducts. But eventually you will reach this room with a device in the middle of the room where you can throw some boxes on and this is going to let you switch between the red and the blue vents. So once you reach that upper platform, go ahead and throw down one of these boxes to activate the red vents. Then simply take the red vent to your left side and this is going to bring you to the last area above. And in this one, pay close attention to the area to your left again. Ignore the enemies, go straight for it. You're going to see one of these yellow chests very close to one of these pillars. And this will give you the Hades armlet right away. So a very solid option nonetheless, pretty much in the entire game. But like I said, if you push to chapter 12, there are going to be some even better items. And some of them you will get from the mini games in the gold saucer. That's why I recommend once chapter 12 unlocks and you get there, you're going to want to go ahead and complete some of these mini games to get some very good options for some of the tougher challenges ahead. So one of them are going to be these Hermes shoes. They will immediately grant you haste at the start of the battle so this is going to improve your atb charge rate by 30 percent this was in fact one of the best spells to have for somebody like tifa back in remake and it's just as amazing if not even more now and this is something that you win by the way from the titan slam grade 2 race in the chocobo square it's actually pretty easy but you will need to have gold in grade 3 so go ahead and just complete 8 out of the 9 races in grade 3 as that's going to be enough to go ahead and challenge the other ones. Another one is the Choco King Cape but this is going to be a bit more difficult to get. However it will fill one ATB charge at the start of any battle and it pretty much works exactly like a 3 star first strike materia. So you can actually couple these two and start pretty much any battle with to ATB charges right away or have them on separate characters and have all of them already capable of spamming some abilities right off the bat. So this is something that you will get in chapter 12 by winning the gold cup during the gold cup or bust side quest. But to open that up you first need to complete the esoteric secrets of the elders another side quest in the nibble region in the chapter before. So that's why I said to pick up the Nibelheim Chocobo ASAP, it's going to open up this quest. You can also pick it off from that um, notice board right there in town and this is going to let you 
progress and complete this mission which you will have to reach right here on this side of the map a bit southeast so once you reach here and meet billy once again you're gonna have to collect 30 choco grass in the nibble region which are some of these floating yellow plants you will see especially near water so again start from any water area you want to you're going to find a bunch of them and use your water jets to reach the higher up places when need to once you get the 30 choco grass simply head over back to the quest area give it in and complete the mission and from this point on the next time you go to the gold saucer in chapter 12 you will now gain access to the gold cup and you will know you did it right if you also see billy right there to your right side so once you beat those which are about three series of races you will then get this really awesome looking cape there are plenty of other very strong options here too both in chapter 9 as well as 12 for example from the 3d brawler you can get the silver as well as the gold boxing gloves so if you defeat dio you're gonna get the silver variant if you defeat ifrit you're gonna get the gold variant so both of them are basically going to give you different degrees of um, well limit gauge charge rate upon staggering a foe of course with the golden variant being much better so somebody like tifa can definitely make use of this in one of her builds but anyway this is going to help you a ton of course i did not cover any of the weapons mainly because with the exception of four you can pretty much find them on the main story path so it's very difficult to miss any of the swords for Cloud or any of the weapons for the other characters. They are always going to be right in front of you when you reach checkpoints. It's like very difficult to miss any of them. But again, I'm going to cover them soon if you want to. Also going over a quick like breakdown of what are the best abilities from them as well as maybe ranking them up, seeing if there's anything new compared to the other games. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.